Welcome, everyone. It is good to see you here. I'm Ron. We are going to do Aegis Balance, and there will be some strength in the lower body for the balance and for the mobility and that kind of thing. But we are going to start out with seated, seated down in the chair, marches. But let's do this first. We always have to start here. Ears, shoulders, hips, straight line all the way down. Shoulder blades are back, not ridiculously back. You don't want to go into an unnatural curve. Just let yourself drop. The body is meant to do certain things. This is it right here. This is the shape we're supposed to be in. Shoulder blades are back, chest is out, chin looking. Chin is not looking. Eyes are looking right out in front of you. Chin is up parallel with the floor. And opposite arm, opposite leg. As you're coming up, control those legs up. Off the ball of the foot. And back down to get on the ball of the foot, starting with the heel. Heel, ball, toe. Up and up. I'm, I'm traveling around. Don't do that. Just try to stay in one place. Sits bones on the floor. Don't let yourself roll forward. Don't let yourself twist as you're doing this. Easiest thing to do that happens is this leaning forward as you're walking or as you're moving those legs, you want to really work on those muscles in the upper back to keep the shoulder blades back, keep that neutral position like this. All right, keep the legs going, going, little roll on the shoulders, little tiny rolls backwards. Start out small, and then start out small forward. And then get a little bigger, a little bigger now, and then let's go backwards, a little bigger. Not huge yet. Keep those feet going. Make sure you've got that alignment, knee, toe, hip, all pointed forward. And speaking of forward, let's get the arms going that way. Palms up on the way up, down on the way down. Do what's right for your shoulder. Today, my Monday shoulder was much different than today, my Wednesday shoulder. It's completely different. I had some little, little aggravation going on in that shoulder that I had to work through. All right. We got it. We got it. Legs down, bring the arms underneath the thighs, arms up overhead. Sweep them up on the sides. Deep breath in, fill up the lungs, push out the stomach just a little bit. Don't get too dizzy here. Take your time, work your way into this. Down and up. Deep breath in through this nose, bringing in all that fresh air and out with the bad, in with the good, bring the arms back down again. Feet apart. Legs out, 45 degree. Remember, remember, remember the toes and the knees go in the same direction. Hands on the thighs. We're just going to do into a little bit of a hip hinge here. Keeping the shoulder blades back, making sure we've got that straight back. And push up through the hands. Don't use that lower back. Wasn't meant for that. That's why you got arms. Down, shoulder blades are back, chest is out, straight line, should be looking down at the floor and not chin to the chest. You're looking down based on where your spine is and then pushing back up to the hands again. It's a push up is what that is. And going into that hip hinge, walk the feet in. So we're working those ankles again, walk them in, walk them in. All right. Hands to the side. We're going to do a narrow row, bringing the elbows back. Let me turn again. Elbows back. And then extend at the arms or at the elbows. Bring them back in. And reach forward. And come up into a seated position. Back down. Put the weight from the ball of the foot to the heels. Roll the shoulders out. As you do this, reaching out, feel the stretch through the glutes, through the lower back, and going into the hamstrings, back of the thighs. Elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and extend. Back in and out. Come to seated one more time. Forward, reach. Elbows back, extend at the elbows, getting in that long stretch, feeling the triceps in the back of the upper arms, working to lift that hand up and then coming back into a curl forward and up and we're there heels out control this 
So we're going to do something somewhat similar when we're standing. First off, make sure your shoulder blades are back. First thing I noticed is my shoulders are starting to roll in. Get your shoulder blades back, foot up, and tap. Out and out. As you do, opposite arm is going to go up. Push, shoulder press. Stretch that arm out. Don't lock the elbow out. You always want to have a little bit of bend in the elbows, in all of the joints, I should say. You never lock them out. You don't put the stress into the joint itself. You make the muscles around it get stronger and work to protect that joint. And up and up. Push. You've got so much better traction, especially with the knees, when you've got strong muscles around the outside of them to maintain stability and to protect them. Muscles stronger, protect you from falls. If you do fall, the muscles will take a better, do more shock absorption when they're stronger than when they're weak. Out and out. One more time, right there, and bring it back down. Back to just the march. We're gonna go into a little bit of a kick here. So find your position before you start, your shoulders, hips. Get the arms going with the legs, there we go. Got that control, shoulder blades back, chest is out. And up and kick and kick. You don't have to kick out very far because what happens is if you go too far, you're going to start rolling into this to try to lengthen out that tr uh, hamstring muscles out and out. So it's not a big push. Opposite arm drives forward as the foot goes forward. Out. Take that hand. Rotate the palm as you go. Turn it. Feel the stretch all the way up the arm, especially through the biceps. Let me go. There we go. I got out of sync I'm back. That's confusing <laughs> for me when that happens. Make sure you're not rolling the shoulders forward as you go, especially when you're pushing that arm out. It's really easy to kind of let that chin drop to the chest. Keep that little curve in the lower part of the back. Rotate the hand, shoulder blades stay back all the way through this. Even at full extension, the shoulder blade is still back there and up. You're not letting yourself roll forward with it. It's out and out. You're gonna feel a lot more stretch if you keep the chest out, back straight, or neutral, I should say, out, out, and out. Back to this, back to just a march. And opposite arm, opposite leg, go back into the arm swing. It's really important when you're walking that you keep those arms moving. I see it a lot. As people get older, they stop moving their arms. That means the legs have to do all the work. Upper body contributes dramatically to the lower body. One for balance, two for endurance. The arms help move you as much as the legs. Well, not as much, but the arms help move you with the legs. So keep them going. You can go so much longer, so much farther, and safer. And up, up, and up. What are we doing next? High knees, like that, and back down, up, and back down, bring it up, and up. So we're going to take the arms as we bring the knee up, arms come up overhead, and all comes back down again, working upper and lower body together. Be really careful on this one as you bring that knee up, and arms up. Roll the shoulder blades back. Open it up. You're going to feel the hip flexor working. You're going to feel some stretch in the back of the upper leg and back of the thigh and back down again. Don't let yourself come forward as that knee comes up. Always watch for that. These are great exercises. If you're sitting in the chair, don't sit in a comfy chair. Sit in a hardback chair if, or a hard-seated chair, watching TV. This is a great exercise. Up and back down. All of these seated exercises are. You can do any of these at any time. And you should be, actually, up and back down as much as you can. Arthritis Foundation says, no more than 30 minutes should you be sitting without movement. And I don't know about you, but I know I can go a day if I'm not careful. Up, shoulder blades back and down. I get a book in my hand, start reading. I'm down for the day. Up and back. It's a conscious effort you have to keep all the time to keep yourself moving. Keep yourself mobile. And down, last one, up and back down. Here's something we're going to do that's fun we haven't done before. Elbows up. We've done this. Elbows up and back down. 
But as you come down, I want you to tighten the core muscles, squeeze the glutes so it's like, oh, drive. Tighten up all of those muscles from the arms, from the shoulders, all the way down into the glutes, into the butt. Tighten it all up. Core, bring it in. Don't push it out. Bring it in. Squeeze and then release. So exhale as you bring the elbows down. <laughs> nice and tight. Squeeze it all together. Notice the shoulder blades come back, chest comes out, head goes a little higher, and release. And again, up, in, squeeze it, tighten up, get all the air out of the lungs, and inhale as you come back up. A couple more times. This is, a, this is like a floor exercise, but we're seated. We're not floor. Down, squeeze it all together, exhale hard. As you exhale, you're tightening up those core muscles, squeezing, that pushes that diaphragm back up, emptying the lungs, and you need to get all the junk out of the lungs so you can get fresh air in. And one more time, down. <laughs> out. And back in, and bring the arms down. Shake that out. Sit to stands. We're not gonna do full sit to stands. We're gonna do hovers. Hands on the thighs, shoulder blades are back, chest is out. A little bit of push, and go all the way up. Again, hands on the thighs, back the calves up to your chair, and just go down in a squat. Just go down as far as you can without getting too hard into it. Just feel the stretch through those muscles in the back of the thigh. And then back up again. It's a hip hinge, push the butt forward. So what you're using for a cue is that back of the calf, that calf muscle, or that calf against the chair as you push the butt back keeping the shoulder blades back, chest is out, and then coming back in again. So you're sure not to push the knees forward as long as you can feel that chair on the back of the, of the leg all the way through this. So that's giving you a good physical cue. You can feel it, and you make sure that you can feel it all the way up to make sure that your form is right through this exercise. Shoulders are back, chest is out, down. Don't let yourself collapse on top of the legs. Stretch out those hamstrings. Hold for a count. And then use the muscles in the core, the glutes, and the hamstrings to squeeze, contract them to bring that butt in. It's a hip thrust. Out. And back in again. Go ahead and sit, sit, sit down. And I didn't do a sit to stand. So don't do this. Don't grab the chair on one side and then help yourself down that way, all twisted and bending. It is straight back and down. <sighs> Old habits. Old habits, man. Old dogs. New tricks, man. Just hard. All right. Out to the side. Out and out. But as long as you're conscious of them, especially like walking and things like that, just be conscious of that you're doing it correctly. Think about it every once in a while. You just notice, oh, and the more you think about it, the more you'll think about it. And the more you think about it, the better you'll be. And then after a while, you don't have to think about it anymore because it just happens. All right. Step out, same arm, opposite direction, and bring it back in. Other side, out and in, out and back. Don't let the torso twist as you do this. The leg works within the hip socket, steps out. Bones stay right in the chair where they were. Arm comes across. Shoulders don't roll. Stretch through the upper back, through the shoulder blade, and back in. So it's out and in. Out. Reach it and bring it back. Out and in. Back a couple more times. One there. One here. And don't lean out as you do that. Back up. Find your neutral position. A couple more things we're going to do. Heel raises. Heel raises are important. We're going to work the ankles just a little bit before we go s to the weights. So bring the feet up. Heels up. Weight in the balls of the foot. Feet. Balls of the feet flat on the floor or flat on the ground. Easier to say. Up and back down. Shoulder blades are back. Chest is out. Don't let yourself roll forward. Again, gravity will take over. Fight it. Fight it. Up and back down. Reach. 
Gravity's kind of in, in, insidious. It wants to take us and curl us all up in that. And we got to fight all the time. We're always on our toes, making sure that we don't roll forward. Up and back down one more time. Up and back down. We're going to walk the feet out like that, like that. And out, toes forward, bring it back in. Two, get those heels in as far as they'll go. Give yourself some flexibility there through the ankle. Strengthen up those muscles on the inside and the outside of the cat of the uh, shin or the lower leg. Out, out, forward, in. Ooh, a little crunch there in the ankle. That's good, I'm sure. Out, two. It still moves, so that's really good. And back in, and it doesn't hurt. Two, three, and four. One more time. Out. Out, last, ones, and back in, two, three, four, we're good. That was the warm up. We are warmed up. We're going to do some strength exercises. Grab yourself a set of weights. We're going to be doing all upper body, arms, and shoulders. So use something appropriate for that. Um, we will be going up over the head, so you want to make sure you've got something that your shoulders will allow you to do that with. Um, and the other thing is, if you want to do these seated, all of them can be done seated. If you want to do them standing, do them standing. You work more muscles from the standing position, but you need to be able to be stronger to hold your form, especially going up overhead that you're not letting yourself roll backwards or bending forward as you're doing it. You need to work all these muscles. If they're not strong enough, do it from a seated position. All right. First thing, first thing, I'm going to keep the chair nearby in case I need it, because I think I might. I think I have something programmed in here where we might need it. Palms facing in. Shoulder blades are back. Hammer curls up and back down, working the biceps. This is why we drove our hand forward, extended from the chest, and rotated. We warmed up these tri or these biceps muscles in the front of the upper arm. If you're standing, make sure you got your feet flat on the floor. Shoulder blades are back no matter if you're seated or standing. You've got that nice neutral posture, little bend in the knees, weight from the ball of the foot to the heels, up, three quarters of the way up, to a quarter of the way up, making sure that you've always got those elbows right next to the torso so you've got as much arc as possible up and back down shoulders wanted to go forward again i had to rework them make sure they're right underneath the ears and back down we got seven seconds left down you go at your pace whatever's right for you not faster slower if you need to and back down Right there is where you should feel that. All right, this one you can do with one or two weights, up to you, depending on your shoulders. We're going to do a forward raise, so it's up and back down, and then alternating to the other side, or single weight, grabbing onto the bells. Shoulder blades are back and coming up. Whichever one is the right one for you. So let's go one more. If you want something a little more aggressive, you can do this. Both arms up and back down. Stage four, up here, down and up, down and up. You know which one's right for you. Try one. If it doesn't work, back down to the other one, to one of those just below it. Here we go. Up or down or whatever you're doing. I'm alternating here. I'm keeping the shoulder blades back. This gives that arm a rest on the down position just for a count while the other one's moving. But what you really want to be careful of or really want to notice here is that the movements are smooth, that you're meeting right about in the middle, working the right and left. Great brain exercise, getting that brain to fire so that you're working right and left both. Stimulating, stimulating those uh, brain synapses and up. Five seconds left. Up and up. And we are done. Bring the arms down. Whoo. 
felt that front of the shoulders, that front deltoid. Next, single weight, set one down. So what we want to do here is be really careful. We're going to go into a stagger step. If you're in a chair, just do a hip hinge, butt back, uh, not butt back. Come out over the legs. Make sure the shoulder blades are back. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. If you're standing, use a chair to help you if you need it. Otherwise, you can use your leg or nothing. So what we're looking to do is bring that arm behind in a narrow row like that to a kickback in and back out. So what you want to watch here is not letting your torso twist as you bring that back and don't let the shoulders roll to the floor. It's a straight back. You have a straight back, a neutral position spine. Elbow back as far as you can get it. Extend out, not locking that elbow. I'll keep a little bend in it. In and out. If you catch yourself leaning forward or uh, shoulders going down towards the floor, make sure that you grab onto that chair and push back. Get those shoulder blades back as far as they will go. So it's as important to use every muscle in the body to maintain stability as it is those muscles you're working to move the weight. Back, out. So you're strengthening all those other muscles. You're also protecting the spine from this, with this. You're not hurting that lower back. Out, in. And five seconds left. And we will switch sides. And we're good on that side. Flip it on over. We're moving on. Foot closest to the chair is the one that's forward. Feet are parallel. Knee stays over the ankle on the front leg. Be really careful not to let that knee go over the toe and put weight into the front because that puts weight through the front of the knee, injuring, injuring the meniscus. Potentially, arm forward. Elbow back, squeeze it all together. Get that back straight. There we go. I didn't have the curve in the lower part of the back. I had to roll those shoulder blades back just a little bit more. Elbow back as far as it'll go. Extend. In and back out. Bring it in. Tight back there. Don't let yourself twist. Don't let those shoulders go to the floor. No hunch back. Up. Out. In. Ten seconds. We got three more in us. Three. Out. In. And down, two left, back, out, in. Feeling this in the back of the upper arm as well as the shoulder blade. Last one. And bring it in. And release, relax. What are we doing next? Single, oh, no, no, no. Grab your, grab your other weight. So we just worked the triceps. We worked the uh, shoulder blades. Those posture muscles keep us upright. Keep the shoulder blades back, chest out, so we're looking in front of us. Biceps curls, palms forward. We're just going to bring them up, just like we did before, and back down. But this time, we've rolled the hand out, which works the muscles on the outer part of that arm through those biceps. Up. So we started working middle to the inside. Now we're going middle to the outside, up. And back down. Again, shoulder blades are back. Chest is out. Elbows to the front of the torso. If you can, if you can, elbows away from the torso. Don't stabilize against it. Use the muscles in the arms and the shoulders to do the work as you lift those weights. And if you need to, if your shoulder's bothering you, if you're doing anything, get those elbows back just a little bit more. That's going to take some of the pressure off. But if you can, get them right out to the front of the torso and get as much arc in there as you can. And back down. Ten seconds left. Up. And back down. We should be feeling this in the front of the upper arm. Arms. Each side. Up. And back down again. Whew. Now one weight down. So we're going to go overhead in the triceps extension. If this doesn't work for you, go back to this. That's working that same muscle, the back of the upper arm. If you can go overhead, I want you to concentrate on is bringing that elbow up by the ear as close as you can get it and in. So elbow pointed towards the ceiling, in towards the ear as much as possible. Don't let this happen. Don't let the elbow go out. The minute you do that, arm goes across. All of a sudden, 
We're working the shoulders, we're working the um, biceps, working the chest, working all kinds of muscles, trapezoids, but we're not working the ones we want. So instead of being here, we want to be here. Elbow up. Weight up. Weight back down. That wrist stays perfectly straight all the way through. Up. So knuckles are pointed towards the ceiling. Use that other hand lightly to hold that elbow in place. What we're doing is we're forcing these muscles, these tricep muscles, to do the work. That's what we're looking for here, those back wing muscles. Up. And back down. So this really helps us isolate those muscles specifically. And back down, coming right down the side. Don't cross body. Up. And back down. And last one, up. And back down, going to the other side. Shaking that out. We're shaking that out, we are. Up, elbow next to the ear. Again, if that's not working for you, you can't get the arm up there, just go back to those triceps kickbacks. Up, elbow next to the ear. Shoulder blades are back. Hold your neutral position. Lightly, lightly hold that elbow. Down and up. So don't take and crank it and force it where it can't go. Bring it in as much as you can. Little by little, those muscles are going to start to stretch. And you will be able to get that in and up higher. Because I wasn't able to do this when I first started. Down and up. Feel those muscles working in the back of the upper arm. That's the beauty of doing this hold. Making sure that you've got that proper posture, proper movement, so we can isolate those exact muscles we want. Down. Five seconds left. Down on the side, elbow up, elbow in, and you are done. Elbow in. Sounds like label M. All right, what are we doing next? Upright rows, last one for the upper body. Then we're going to lower body, body weight. Palms in front of the thighs, shoulder blades are back. <sighs> Just kind of relax the shoulders, roll them around a little bit. We're not, we're not rushing into this next one. Weight is in the ball of the foot to the heels, nice and relaxed. Little bend in the knees. We're just going to bring the weights up, chest level. Don't have to go any higher. Elbows right straight out to the sides and back down again. Don't let the elbows come up as, or er, those are shoulders. Up here, shoulders. I have to learn that. All right, up. Elbows out to the side. Shoulders stay right where they are and back down. Working these muscles along the top of the neck, the trapezoids up taking some of the pressure off of the shoulders stabilizing strengthening the muscles around the shoulders to stabilize them back as you come up we can get posture muscles in there squeeze the shoulder blades together and back down again you keep going your pace up squeeze the shoulder blades back don't have to come up very high don't get up under the chest and don't let the elbows come up high keep those arms right or the weights parallel with the floor how high you come up. That last one I did was way too high for my shoulders. And back down. Not all the way down. Don't lock the arms out on the way down. Keep a little bend in them. Remember, you've got that little bend in the knees as well. Weights from the ball of the foot to the heels. One more time up. Elbows out. And bring it down. Set the weights down. Grab a drink of water. Your upper body is officially worked out. We are going hips down so one thing I've always done I've never talked about it is when I do standing exercises when we do um, lower body standing exercises I like to use a counter height chair so I have that right here I find that if I use this lower chair I have this tendency to kind of roll down to it, but kind of bend to reach the back of the chair. If you've got a higher back chair, if you've got a regular seated chair with a higher back, that's absolutely perfect. Like a desk chair, except no rolly wheels. No rolly wheels. No rolly wheels. All right. Ready? Here we go. We're going to do hips, basic stuff, nothing huge. Starting out with heel raises. Get them up as high as you can. Really work on getting that foot 
all the way across the floor. The ball of the foot touching from inside to outside. Bring it up. Feel those muscles working in the back of the lower legs. And back down again. Keep a little bend in the knees. As you come up, you're scooping up underneath, so you're still stacked right on top. Don't let yourself roll forward. Bring those shoulder blades back, chest out. You'll feel a whole lot more work happening here. Isolating specifically on those calf muscles, which lift the heel. We need that for heel ball toe walking. The first part of that is to lift the heel up off the ground, preventing shuffling. Unless you're playing cards, then you can shuffle. That's the only time. Up. And back down. One more time. Bring it up. Feel those muscles working in the back of the, uh, back of the lower legs. Up. Squeeze it. Hold it up there. Make sure you get your neutral position. Toes are for balance, not for support. And back down again. And we're isolating. We're getting those specific muscles which have a specific purpose. Calf muscles lift that heel up, allowing us to pick that leg up. Next one we're going to do is high knee raise, working the hip flexors. So after we raise the heel, we pick up the leg. Picking up that leg means we have to work these hip flexors to get it up in the air. Once we got that heel up, we lift the leg, high as we can get it, not leaning forward, and back down nice and slow. As you come down, just tap the toe and bring it back up again. Stationary leg, little bend in the knee. Don't lock it out backwards. Down and up. You're on the ball of the foot to the heel on stationary leg. Toe and knee. All in the same direction, right out in front of you as you do this. And back down, tap. Use the muscles in the hips, front of the hips, to do the work to lift. And back down, tap, control the muscles. Again, as you go slower, you're working all the muscles harder, but especially those fine motor muscles, because you're going to have to stop it instead of just letting it plop on the floor. You're controlling that movement. That works the fine motor muscles. Those are the ones that help us with the reaction time, giving us a fast and more stable reaction time. Up. And back down. Right there. Front of the hip, probably a little bit in the quadriceps too, the top half of the thigh. And back down again. Hamstrings. Hamstrings are lifting that leg up. Knee pointed towards the floor. As the elbow towards the ceiling for the triceps, the exact same thing. Back of the thigh, knee pointed towards the floor, right next to that other knee, and bring the heel up as high as it'll come. Keep the shoulder blades back. What's really easy to do here is roll forward because, like, look how high I can get my heel up. What we want to do is isolate these muscles right in the back of the thigh. There's three muscles making up the hamstrings. Up. And back down again, controlling on the way down. You always want to be in control of your movements. Muscles do not tell you what they're going to do. You tell them what they have to do to keep you up, keep you moving. Squeeze. Feel this in the back of the leg. You may feel it in the calf muscle a little bit too. Up. You can bring that toe in, stretching out the calf muscle instead of tightening it up. Straight up. And back down. However high you can bring that heel is how high you go. And then one little squeeze after that. And then back down. Little by little, you get stronger. You'll get more flexibility. That heel will come up higher. Promise. All right. Next, out to the side we go. Feet side by side. Shoulder blades back. Chest is out. Get yourself next to your chair on this one. I want to make sure that you keep the torso upright and that you don't lean away. We're working the outside, the muscles on the outside of the hip and in the butt here, those medial glutes to lift this leg out. It's called abduction. Out, toe forward, and back in. So your body is still right over your base of support, over that stationary leg. That's where you want to be. That's where your stability is. Bend in the knee, ball the foot to the heel. Out to the side, toe forward, don't let it go out, and the leg come forward. The only way we're going to isolate these, uh, these muscles in here is to make sure that that toe is forward, leg's coming right out the side. Up, squeeze it. Squeeze the glutes. Tighten up that butt. 
glutes of steel, glutes of steel, up, and back in. A couple more times. Up. So these muscles are really important for stabilizing the hips so that as you walk, they're strong. They'll hold your hips straight instead of as you walk, the hips going from side to side. Other thing they'll do, they'll protect the hip joint if you do fall because they will be stronger, as we talked about earlier. We're going to work front half of the leg up. Shoulder blades are back, doing a lift. And back down. So exercises we're doing are for walking, super important. But one of the places you really use these strength exercises to raise that leg is going up, going upstairs, going up a curb, getting onto a bus, and back down. Anything, even, even the kneeling buses, the ones that come down so that you can get on, you still have to be able to lift that leg up. And back down, up. The other place, really important, and I, this is in the false prevention classes I do, it's really important that to people, they need to be able to walk on their grass, and they're afraid to walk on the grass because it's uneven. Reason, they're not getting that foot up. They don't have the ankle strength and flexibility to keep them strong, to keep them up. So we work all these muscles, including the ankle, so that we're not limited in where we can go and what we can do. And back down one more time. Bring it up. And down. We're going to lift the leg behind. Oh, we're so out of time. Let's get to the other side. I'm so sorry. We're going we're gonna to move on over to the other side. Starting with high knee raise. So shoulder blades are back, chest is out. We're going to go just a little bit over if you can stay with me. Perfect. If not, uh, finish up on your own as you get time or the video will be on. It's in the YouTube uh, folder playlist. So take a look at it later. And you can do these exercises every day. You can. So you can go look at those videos anytime. Shoulder blades are back, chest is out. I give you a little time to get over to the other side of your chair. Bring the leg up, toe forward, and back down. You're over that stationary leg as always because that's where you're most stable. If you're leaning out here and legs all over the place out in front of you and weight, you got weight all directions. Up, toe forward, and back down. So I do these all the time and I can still, these muscles, I can feel it lifting that leg up. They're working, they're fatiguing up you never can stop working these muscles the minute you do they start to break down we got to make sure that we keep them strong we keep them the muscle dense up and back down and that means working out regularly up high up and back down one more time bring it up hold it and back down butt kickers Shoulder blades are back, chest is out. Keeping our neutral posture, little bend in that stationary leg and the knee. Knee pointed towards the floor, heel up to the butt. And back down, in that direction of the butt. It doesn't have to touch. It won't touch. I can't do that. Up. And back down, tap. Tap lightly with the toe. Remember, you're in control of those muscles. And back down. Don't let yourself roll forward. Don't lean off to the side. Stay over that stationary leg. All of these are really about strengthening the core and the hips to hold you over that stationary leg where you always want to be. Whenever you're walking, you're over your base of support. Up. And back down. One more time. Up. And back down. Out. Out, out. To the side we go. Shake that hip out a little bit, huh? That stationary side? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Out to the side. Bring it up. Toe forward. It feels like you're leading with the heel. You're not. The toe is forward. But it's like you're doing this as you're lifting out to the outside. And that, the more you can get that heel out, the more you're going to feel it in the glutes. Definitely. But you don't have to. Just so it feels like that. Out. And back in. Out. Squeeze those muscles. Make sure you can feel this in the outside of the hip and in the side of the butt as you do that. Out, squeezing, shoulder blades are back, you're in your neutral position, and bring it back in. Out. 
and in one more time. Take it out. And bring it back in. Front leg raise. Ready? Shoulders back, chest up. Find your neutral position before you start. On that one leg up. If you can do this without the chair, perfect. Hover your hand over it. Because these are single leg stands. They're more, they're more hard. They're harder than single leg stands because your leg is going forward. So weight shift forward. You're holding everything over that stationary leg. And back. So it's up to you how you do it. Most important thing is that you're not working on your balance here only. You're working on this hip, lifting it up. If you cannot maintain your balance, grab onto that chair, focus on the strength in the hip. Back down, tap lightly, up. Hold for a count, make sure everything's pointed out in front of you. And bring it back down one more time, up. Squeeze and hold. And nice and slow, back down again. Get into your chair. We're going to stretch out the hips quickly. Outside of the hips, glutes. Feet on the floor. Left ankle, right shin. Bring it up as high as you need to to feel that stretch and the piriformis on the outside of the hip. Oh, on that left leg, it feels so good. Really tighten those muscles up when we were doing those exercises. They're contracted the entire time. You got to take them while they're nice and warm like that and get them back stretched out just a little bit. Anything you can do to break that fascia down on the outside of the muscle will help to lengthen it back out again and back down. Muscles do not get shorter. They get tighter. And the fascia around them keeps them short or keeps them tight. So they're always the same length. Those muscles do not change. So you can get that stretch back. You don't lose it unless you don't use it. If you don't do the stretches, you're going to lose the ability to extend as far. And then it causes all sorts, all, all sorts of other problems. Bring it down, feet out wide. Hands on the thighs, right down the middle. Stretching out the hips, the inner thighs, hamstrings wonderfully back of the thighs. It's a great stretch. Push up through the hands, come on back up again. And we're going to just roll the arms down this time. Feet out. Make sure you've got all the weight planted from the knee down into the heel of the foot. As you roll down, don't let the chin go to the chest. You should be looking at the floor. But the shoulders roll down. A little more stretch, probably feeling it down in the calf muscles as well as the hamstrings. Hands up. This isn't a stick up. You're just bringing them up to your thighs. So I mean, hands up. Give me all your money. And up. Bring the legs in, shake it out. Let us go up overhead two times. Up, deep breath in. This time really get as much air in the lungs as you can. Get the shoulder blades back. Hold that position. Chin up. Inhale through the nose. Push the stomach out and exhale. So posture is really important here so that you have this opening in the throat to get the air in, bringing it down into the lungs. You're not contracting those muscles or Tightening up that neck by putting the chin down to the chest. Keep it open. As much air as you can get in, pushing out the stomach and exhaling, bringing the hands down to the side. Thank you guys for being here. I always appreciate it. I am so glad you are here, and I will see you again on Friday. Thank you, guys.